Now we're going to try the same effect in Apple Motion. So I highlight the shot, go to File, Send to Motion Project, and give it a name, send it to the, an appropriate destination, click Save. This will cause Motion to open up. And we wait a moment as Motion opens. Here we are, and here's the picture. Let's uh, reduce the image size so that it fits in the window. Then I click on the image, and that opens up the inspector. And just like in Final Cut Pro, first thing I need to do is move the playhead forward a little bit. And then I use this drop-down menu here to set a keyframe for position, and another one for scale. And now I click this red record button and advance the playhead as far as I want to and then pause it. Now I come up here and increase the scale and then drag the image to where I want it to end up. Okay, and now I'm going to play it and I predict, oh first I turn off the record button now I'm going to play it and I predict that the results will be no better than in Final Cut Pro. Let's take a look. Yep, it's wobbling and it's uh, pretty much the same as it was. But we can fix this. Uh, we click F6 which opens up the timeline and then we open the keyframe editor tab and here's our problem. Some of these lines are curved and some are straight. We need them all to be curved to have acceleration and deceleration. The purple line uh, needs to be changed. So I go to this drop down menu here and go to interpolation and change it from linear to Bezier. Now we can see that the same needs to be done to the orange line. Interpolation, Bezier. Okay. Now uh, we're going to look at this again and the motion will probably not be perfect here because of the screen capture movie that you're looking at, but uh, let's take a look. Yeah, this is uh, what uh, we want. This is a smooth motion, uh, at least in what I'm looking at, possibly not in what you're looking at. Uh, to finalize this, now we go to File save and then either uh, quit or hide motion. Now we're back in Final Cut Pro and we can see that um, the shot has changed to a motion movie and it needs to be rendered. Okay now it's rendered so let's watch it in Final Cut Pro Now I find that motion is a really easy way uh, to go if you're only dealing with two sets of keyframes. If you get into uh, even more complicated effects where you're going to then move on and maybe have this picture pan right or zoom somewhere else and you're going to have multiple sets of keyframes uh, and you want acceleration and deceleration, it gets too complicated for motion and I have not figured out a way to have it work. Uh, to do really complicated effects, I go to After Effects. Obviously, After Effects is not part of the Final Cut Pro suite, so I'm going to have to go outside of Apple products. I'm going to export a QuickTime file out of Final Cut Pro, then work in After Effects, but I am not going to export a picture file as I did uh, when I went to Motion. Instead, I'm going to uh, export an audio file because I use audio to really drive my pieces and to get my timing. So here I've got a piece of music. I'm going to uh, put it onto the uh, timeline. Then I'm going to mark an in point at the beginning and then play my music until I get to where I want the effect to end and then leave a little bit of a handle 
pause it and uh, mark an out point. And then I am going to export using QuickTime conversion. Uh, give my file a name send it to the right place and I'm only going to export the audio using an AIFF uh, file. Here we are now with After Effects open and first I need to import my audio so I navigate to that. There it is. Open it up and then drag it into my composition window and it opens with the proper aspect ratio for my project and now I want to import my picture I'm not going to import it from Final Cut Pro I'm going to import it from its original location so I have to navigate to that there it is bring it in and then bring that into my composition window as well. And now I need to open up this uh, drop down arrow, open up transform, and first thing I need to do is adjust the scale for my starting scale. Okay, and my position. Good. Now I hold down the command key and drag this over to the beginning of my effect. I can hear my audio cue there. And now I'm going to place a keyframe for position and another one for scale. And there are the keyframes. Now I'm going to hold down command again and drag the playhead. There's my cue for my ending. So now I'm going to zoom in and drag over. Okay, good. So now I have four keyframes, but I want an ease in and an ease out. So I'm going to start by highlighting my two opening keyframes and then right clicking and going to keyframe assistant and I choose easy ease out very good and you can see how they've changed to a different shape now I'm going to select my last two keyframes right click keyframe assistant and easy ease in very good and so now we can go to the RAM preview and it's going to mess around for a minute figuring out what it needs to do and now it's going to play. So I'm going to stop that and now I am going to um, export and I like to just export a QuickTime movie even though After Effects doesn't uh, prefer me to do that that's what I'm going to do now we're back in Final Cut Pro and we want to import the After Effects uh, project that we just created so I navigate to it import it and here it is in my browser I open it up in my viewer and I want to put it on the timeline I don't want to put in the audio just the video so there we go and there's my uh, After Effects movie and obviously it's going to need rendering. Okay now it's all rendered here in Final Cut Pro and we're going to play it back and it probably won't play smoothly in this uh, screen capture movie. But here on my screen it's playing back just beautifully we have uh, successfully completed a beautiful Ken Burns effect using Final Cut Pro and After Effects.